do these two. Had a nice swim, got them calmed down, getting some rest. My bad, I, I have two batteries in this camera right now. Both of them are dead, really? Just getting started. I have some repotting to do. The big queen palm over here, talked about that in the garden tour. And Oh, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well, I'm great. It's a beautiful night, a little bit chilly. I could probably turn the fan off, but it blows the mosquitoes away. But maybe you can, I, I'll turn it off. That's probably allowed and get batteries. I'm gonna try this again. There we go, it's not rocket science. Take the old batteries, you put them in the pack. I do this almost every single day. Don't know why I forgot to do it today. Never mind, they're just bad batteries they didn't charge. So, as I was saying, or you say hi to the pets first. There's Cosmo, hey Cosmo. Pumpkin, you wanna say hi? Okay, not so much. Three pots, talked about this in the last garden tour, which should be the last long video, the last Saturday video from this one have the big queen palm needs to go into a larger container. And then this Edenidia palm right here, which is in very, very, very bad need of a new pot. I don't, everything's all wet. I forgot that the sprinklers are going. Why did I start this video at six o'clock at night? This is a bad idea. Always when you're like, hey, I need to get ready. I'm supposed to be somewhere in like an hour and a half. And then, then I'm gonna pick up the camera and start to do things. I just I get excited, want to do the gardening things. No matter, we'll get to it, maybe in the morning. We'll probably get something started tonight. I have some new plants here. Lime zinger xanthosomas, my favorites. I've said about every plant. The xanthosomas, they're an elephant here that just has such a fun, unique shape to their leaves. And the lime zinger has that great color that you get with like the Maui Gold Colocasia, that more of a chartreuse green. Right now, the leaves look pretty typical elephant ear like, but as they mature, their points are much sharper. The sinus is a little bit deeper and the body of the leaf is more narrow. Just a neat looking plant. They're on sale, so I ordered a bunch of them. These just came in the mail, uh, well, not just, a few hours ago, and then I filmed the garden tour and that I need to get these unwrapped right now. There's a curcuma right here, and then this is a hedichium <laughs> Tahitian flame, which is just supposed to be a rhizome. I was ordering the curcuma, which is right there, and then this popped up as a suggestion and they got me. I went ahead and I ordered it because the Tahitian flame's not the easiest ones to get a hold of sometimes. I already have one, but I was like, well, you know, the more the merrier, I'll get another one. Yeah, they saw me coming. Turbo, do you want this? No, now that I'm holding it, nothing. Also, forgot to mention the garden tour, new cushions. How exciting, which is why there's a giant pile of old cushions in the background of the video. I probably should have talked about that. I don't think these chairs were meant to have cushions that have a back on them. When you sit in them, that's like, it just feels awkward when the, okay, you want it? Look, now you can take it, good boy. Like it would push you forward and you couldn't really see the back of the chairs. The chairs look nice. I just, I think this looks better. It's more comfortable too. Much more comfortable actually, especially when it's really hot outside, not having the fabric on the back. Did I talk about cushions too much? It's exciting. The new things are exciting. Got the table last year, but had to hold off on the cushion. So here's where I am. And also, hopefully, if you haven't figured out this video, it's for entertainment purposes. So don't complain about the time or any of that stuff. You can, you know, click off if that's an issue. If there's gonna be rambling, there's gonna be nonsense. Hopefully that's what you came here for. I have lots of videos on repotting palm trees, so I'm just probably not going to go all that into detail. But make sure there's good drainage. The two palm trees that I'm repotting are queen palms and the Adenidia palm, neither of which are palm trees that really need a special soil blend. They're pretty sturdy, low fuss palm trees. Well, the Adenidia, they can be a pain in the butt, but that one's not my problem during the winter time. That goes off to a greenhouse. So that'll be somebody else's issue to take care of in the winter. The queen palm, that'll be a tomorrow project for sure, because I have to get in here and undo all the wire that's holding this up, which is gonna be fun because this area back here is just packed full of plants. So I'll have to figure that out. Get all the stuff off the trunk and, you know, lift all the annuals out and then, you know, move this big thing into this giant thing. 28 inch container bumping up to the 36 and this thing, it's gigantic. This thing's freaking huge. Look at all the, look, look at, I'll show you. You see that? Look, look at that. So much room for activities. Probably not a smart idea. It's a little torn up because Turbo's been having some fun playing with it too, which is all my doing and I don't regret it. I didn't get these containers because they're pretty. It's because when you get to certain sized pots, there just isn't much to choose from. So here we are. This is what was available. I'm gonna try and get that Adenidia palm 
pulled up. I'll pull the drip out of it at least and get it pulled up so that way it can dry out some overnight because right now it's sopping wet and I don't I don't want to mess with it when it's sopping wet. Hydrated, yes, but sopping wet, eh. Okay, got that pulled up. Wasn't that hard. I don't know why I thought it was going to be. You just tilt it over and slide it out. Probably could have filmed that. Thinking it would be a good idea to shut the water off to this zone over here, which is zone four. Yeah, I don't know, y'all don't care about the zone numbers, but that drains over here into this hole. I'm probably gonna have to dig that out in the morning, I would think. And actually, it's not even hot out. The whole thing can be off for tonight. Everything's well hydrated and it's not warm. That needs to drain out. Pot needs to dry out some. And before I can call it a night and move on with things, I should handle like the priorities, which would be these. Both of these, when they came in the mail, were looking fine. They've dried out a little bit. I ran some water like right into the gap where the plastic was so that they could rehydrate this rhizome is little for hedichium the curcuma this is that's pretty much what i expect still some moisture in there when i order things like these i generally don't expect there to be much growth of any kind on them but it's nice when there's at least something because there's some sort of nutrients to get pulled back down into the rhizome I need to water in the lime zingers i'm gonna get those potted up and then this will be back in the morning you can't really do much more than that tonight I don't think. I think that's everything that I can get done right now. Oh, wait, I don't know what is wrong with me. Hi, gardening channel and a vlog. People might want to see what you're doing. I'm going to start this one off in a smaller pot, just like one of these proven winner gallon size containers. And I'm thinking like probably 50 50 compost with the potting mix. Ginger's usually like a lot of compost. I also have this Light Warrior here, which is a seed starting mix that just like screams ginger and heliconia. It's a good mix. Where's my pot? I had a bag that was open. Changed my mind about the plastic pot and I decided to use the Light Warrior mix and I did that as I'd say a 60-40 blend, probably like average-ish between that mix and the compost. Gingers like things nice and moist. They want things to drain well. They also like lots of organic material. They like it nice and rich and I switched to the yellow pot just because I had it so I figured why not this ginger still has time to somewhat establish itself this year might get a flower spike out of that offshoot though I highly doubt it but maybe I'll leave a nice size lip there so it's easy to give this plant heavy drinks when I need to the what I was getting ready to say with this container with the curcumas you know they're not perennial here they have to die back during the winter time and go dormant and I've had uh, not the best luck keeping them dormant in these plastic containers. So I'm just going to give this a shot this year. I mean, why not? And I think it'll just look nice for all the reasons I said before about maybe getting another growth, hopefully more than one growth out of it and maybe a bloom. We'll see about that. Also, I think I'd like to try that flaming torch in the ground. Tahitian torch, not flaming torch. So, oh, there's a lot of echo over here. Well, oh, that's not gonna drive y'all crazy. This is going to be brief anyways. This spot over here has this Hedichum coronorium in it and it comes back every year, but does nothing. So I at least know the spot's warm enough for uh, another Hedichium. I'm just gonna plop it in here, see how it does. I've kind of wanted to experiment with a different type over here for a while and the Tahitian flame doesn't get that large. So I figured this would be a decent spot for it. Maybe, yeah, we'll find out next year, I suppose. All right, new plants are handled. Don't you just love when all the perlite floats to the top when you give it a heavy soak? Nice. Gingers in the ground over here, I know this spot's a mess. I have almost all the plumbing pieces that I need to reroute all this drip over here to between the needle. When we get there, I'll film it. Been waiting for a few things around back where lime zingers, they're watered in, chilling. Now just, Time to wait. I guess I could, in theory, go ahead and measure the diameter of that hole and then the pot that it's going into and see if I need to dig it out. I don't want to dig it out right now anyways, because it's, it's all wet and muddy. Just wait till morning and do that then. Y'all ever do that to your brain where it's like you haven't done enough? I've done enough today. It's been a busy day. I filmed a garden tour, edited it, got that uploaded and ready to go. Like a solid 14 hour work day. Hence why my brain hasn't been keeping up with things. Also a good note to myself, time to go. Pick up in the morning. <laughs> Such a goofball. Welcome to the next day. On Friday night, I was trying to get my energy back up to get some stuff done out here. This is, I'm having some uh, thoughts here. 
mostly just that I don't, uh, I don't know if it's gonna fit. The top, no problem. Definitely space for the top, but the bottom of the container, I think is 18 inches. That's 24. I can make it work. Sometimes you just gotta chisel away at the soil and loosen things up and it'll, it'll go in there, but the whole point is to upgrade it to something larger for the entire volume of the root mass, but may not even be an issue because I've been looking at this and I'm wondering if this is potentially a field grown palm that's just been tossed into a nursery can. I've dealt with many of those in my years with the palm trees. It's not, they're not not fun plants to repot. And they typically are the ones that are insanely heavy, which this one is it's like heavy, but I feel like it's as heavy as you would expect for an Adenidia palm this size. So I highly doubt there's clay and sand down inside of the container. That probably won't even be an issue, I don't think. It's probably mostly just roots in there anyways. There's really only one way to find out. Gonna have to lay this on its side, cut that pot off, which I hate to do. That's a perfectly good 25 gallon, actually that might be a 20 gallon. Perfectly good, very large nursery can that I could use for other things. I'm gonna try and wiggle it off there before I cut it and oh, oh, we'll cut back. This needs to dry some more, it's still sopping wet. So is the ground. I could go ahead and just put this in here, make sure that even fits, because if it doesn't, I need to go back to the drawing board. Huh? Yeah, yep, okay, that works. And that looks much better than the nursery can with the like four inches of roots sticking out the top. Yeah, I'm gonna let it dry a little bit more. You can see it's kind of cloudy out. Might be some rain coming. Turbo has a play date. So we're gonna do all those fun weekend things and eventually gonna get to this. Maybe, might just cut back and the palm tree will be in that container. Sometimes I get antsy sitting around the table for too long. Conversation is fun and everything, but it's the weekend. I need to do some gardening stuff. So there's a very, very, very strong possibility that I will get bored and decide to do this while having a conversation. Done. The lens really fogged up. It's, I had it outside for like 20 minutes. Come on, I gotta keep moving. We'll get a better look at this later because I need to show y'all something else. I got it moved into the pot. Was not easy, took a long time because the root ball at the bottom was just like a rock. I spent probably a good three or four hours combing out the roots. But I got it done, got it in there, put it back into its hole. I added more drip. So there are five emitters on there and I popped two of the Limezinger Xanthosomas in here. And it seems fine. I mean, it did, I was pretty rough with it. There wasn't really an option. I was as gentle as I could be while dragging it all over the patio because to comb the roots out, I had to take it over to the edge. I didn't want dirt all over the place, soil, and all the mess that came from that on the patio. So I had to pull it and get, you get it. And the pot, no, I spent a good, probably 45 minutes just on trying to get the pot off without having to break it and that didn't well you just saw it didn't work out very well it was stuck and they're very stubborn didn't want to come out so now the queen palm that's what's next and i was going to hold off on that because one it's really windy very windy just clean the pool it's already full of leaves the first thing i need to do though is unwrap all the support wires from the queen palm that keep it from blowing over in the wind okay they worked really well for the last like what, 15 months or however long this has been out here. I need to get this picked back up very, very quickly because you see, you see what caught the fall or what almost caught the fall? Landed right above the tie. One frond on that lamp post is what kept this from falling down and breaking the tie, which it really wouldn't be that big of a deal. It would have just split it. I would have replanted what broke. I wouldn't have been heartbroken over it, but it would have been unfortunate. So that's what that's why I decided to keep filming even though the lens is foggy because here's what's happening and I don't have time to wait. I gotta pick this back up. Give the lens some time to defog. I don't know if I should pick this back up all the way or if I should like pick it up and then lay it back down because it is really, really breezy today. And if it just keeps doing this, then isn't it just going to Huh, should I just leave it? That seems like a bad idea. I don't think I should just leave it there. Okay, so here we really fogged up again. That was another thing about the dry air. Didn't have to let the camera defog. Just came outside and worked wonderfully. Give this another 10 minutes so I can give like a five second update. Better? Eh, kind of. Okay, so I got the palm tree, the queen palm, off of the light bulb, got the globe replaced. I wasn't able to pick it back up. I've encountered a problem here. There's, there's nowhere to stand. 
because I have the pots being stored here and then there's the fountain over there so there's nowhere to get under it with leverage to lift it back up and uh, with it being off of that light post right there now it's like snagged on a branch inside the pine tree. Little things just turned into a great big mess. Hit and pause on this project anyways. I mean, I think the universe has already told me to hit pause on it because we're supposed to have pretty gnarly storms rolling through here this afternoon and then throughout the evening, like bedtime hours when I'll be asleep. So why, there's no, why pick it up, right? It's just gonna blow back over. So I'm just, it can just stay there and hopefully the backyard will still be intact tomorrow morning after the storms roll through and everything will be good out here. I would imagine the pool is probably gonna be full of leaves and branches, but that's all right. As long as the plants stay upright, good. No big deal. Probably try and put the umbrella down, even though I don't want to. I'd prefer to leave the umbrella up because that helps keep the cushions dry. So there's a dry place to sit, but oh well, this is probably safer just so nothing blows away. And by nothing, I mean, you know, the table. Really dramatic much. It wasn't even that windy. The storms were really intense though. I have never in my life seen that much lightning. Like, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half, two hours. I don't think more than two or three seconds passed where the sky wasn't just completely lit up. Through all the windows in the house, like it just looked like there was a rave going on outside. It was really cool, especially because there wasn't damage. There might be some flash flooding that I'm not aware of now, but out here, everything's fine. Pool overflowed around six o'clock this morning and come out and drain it down. And then of course, just like the other time, everything from the neighbor's home just washed on in here. That made a bit of a mess, but again, not a big deal. Not in hindsight with flooding and things that could be a lot, lot, lot worse. I'm grateful for the rain. I need to pick this up. I'm really surprised it even blew over. Like, why? That pot is a good foot or so down into the ground, something like that. I mean, it's not, it really wasn't that windy. And this blew over with the first round of storms where it was like raining, but not that bad. When palm trees blow over, if there's gonna continue to be storms, I just leave them. Same thing with that queen palm. is like, there's gonna be more storms. No reason to pick it up. Every time that gets blown over, that's just gonna cause more damage. You just walk right through there. Not a care in the world. Thanks, Turbo. It's because plain skin brews in the center. The center growth comes out, you know, the heart of palm, the palm heart don't want that getting damage from the plants being thrown all over the place and this palm tree has been through it this week it was up and down and up and down and up and down and drug all over the patio to get it repotted i'll get that picked up this is all sopping wet back here i have a friend who's going to come over this weekend and we're going to tag team this together i really need someone standing over here to guide the pot while i stand back there and lift the trunk back up it's either that or pull everything out all of the plants take the fountain apart pull that out and uh, then i could probably like swing it sort of this way and slide it out now it doesn't matter it's sopping wet everything's sopping wet there's no dry place to stand so that's not happening been a fun week had i known that the thing was gonna happen with the queen palm i would have filmed repotting the adenidia palm i figured the queen palm was gonna be more entertaining because of its size and um, how stubborn it's probably going to be. Like it'd probably just be me cursing at the palm tree for a good 10 minutes. Figured that'd be more fun to watch. Again, had I known, would have filmed that. So it's fine. There's still other things to talk about. I have a box of plants here. It took a long time to come in the mail. When I got those limes, it, you know, hold on. I need, to, I need to pick this up before I move on. That's gonna drive me crazy. Oh, poor little zingers got beat up. They should be okay. Fairly tough plants that also I noticed that the drip, this drip loop, snapped, and it didn't just snap, the actual fitting broke. That's, I don't think, ever happened before. That was a lot of tension there. That was originally attached to a T that went right here. There's all the pieces that remain from that. Not concerned with that because I don't need to water today. That was a lot of rain. It's not supposed to be that warm today either, so this is good. I came in and backfilled this some more so it would have some more stability, but I think I need to add some more gravel in there. Also, I had mentioned that I was going to move my banana tree over here to sit in front of this pot. But when I moved my pack of stackies that was sitting here, uh, the lollipop plant, I noticed that I had, I had apparently set it right on top of a little palm seedling. Oops, tough palm seedling though. <laughs> thing. So I'll probably just leave this as it is for now. Maybe get a trailer over the front. I don't know if I'm going to bother with that this time of the year, but next year that'll be something to 
think about. And with this new container being here, it's a lot larger, so there was a hibiscus back here, but there's really not any room for that now. I don't think that's going to fit the wind. Got this one knocked over to, I might have to stake it up. It's the Pakistakis, as referring to the lollipop plant. And then real quick, just because I didn't really talk about it, the potting mix that I use for this with Adenidias in general, I'll use an all-purpose potting mix that I add some coarse material to. I like to add sand, perlite, uh, cocoa chips works well, orchid bark of some kind, just something a little bit more chunky and airy to make sure that things are washing through the soil properly. And then I add in some compost, not too much. I mostly like to use earthworm castings. That's just a winter survivability thing. If they were to stay outdoors all year, I don't think I'd worry about that. But since these go off into a greenhouse where, well, for one, they're out of my care. So I don't want to make a soil blend that's going to hold on to too much moisture when they're not in warm conditions and I can't monitor the plant. Or even in general, if it's a plant I'm taking inside, I want to make sure that it's a balanced mixture that's going to work well for the plant while it's outdoors and also be fine for when they're inside during the winter time. Outdoors, they need more moisture retention. Indoors, they need less. You have to worry more about rot when the plant's not being grown in really warm conditions. Adenidias like things warm. And by warm, I mean over 75 degrees, 80 degrees and up, preferably with them. So that's why they don't make the best house plants unless you have a really, really sunny room and which most of us don't, you know, if you have a sunroom or something like that, excellent house plant, they probably would do great. Generally you get like three to five years out of them indoors and then they start to go on the decline. Doesn't matter, this one's so big, it's going off to the greenhouse. Okay, so that's why I mostly prefer the earthworm castings over using too much compost. There's a good amount of that in there. There's also palm gain and some osmocote in the mix as well. I know I rattled off a lot of stuff there, but it was really one of those things where I just threw all the soil together into that large pot over there. I used that to mix the soil. And then I threw in like just handfuls of everything. And I really just eyeballed it until I you know, could hold it and it would fall apart in my hands and it was still nice and dark. That's all there is to it. And really like with the Adenidias and the Queen Palms an all purpose potting mix that you go ahead and add just some earthworm castings to, some palm gain or some sort of slow release that they're generally good with that. There are of course going to be exceptions to that depending on you know, how you're growing the plant and the pH of your water, those sorts of things you might have to make some adjustments if the soil becomes too alkaline or aesthetic. I'm very distracted by this dog. He's been really cute today. Not that he ever isn't cute. Okay, one other thing that I'm excited about and we can get on to showing the plants. Look at, remember in the garden tour, if you saw that last video, I was talking about how the Adenidia, this one over here, the double trunk one had a bloom coming out, but I didn't think it was gonna do anything, but it, it popped right open. That's gonna be fun, isn't it? I mean, I think it, I get excited over these little things. When the plants flower, it means they're healthy. It makes me happy. Okay, some new plants. Let's talk about what's going on over here. So here's what happened here. Do you want to focus? Come on. I knew I wanted the lime zingers. The lime zingers anthosoma was talking about at the beginning of the video. A plant I've wanted for a long time, and I've seen them around at nurseries, and I don't know why I never just got them. Because so I know I love the Maui gold colocasias. These are basically that, but much cooler. It's hard to tell right now. But after seeing them at the Smithsonian Botanical Garden that was in that video, I was just like, I have to, I need to go ahead and get some of those. So I got online, ended up going through Etsy and through Hertz actually on Etsy and they were only $4.99. So I was like, okay, I should probably get four so that I can put some into some containers and spread them around and have enough to play with for winter survivability, see how they do in the grow space this winter. I just, I wanted a lot to play with. And $4.99, good price. Shipping was $7.50, packaging was nice. The whole intention here, I should get to that before I start talking about the packaging, was I wanted to do a compare and contrast because I saw that Hertz, <laughs> almost lost my train of thought there, Hertz had them and so did Wellspring. Wellspring Gardens is an online seller similar to Hertz who sells teeny tiny, I mean, you can see them right here, tiny, tiny little plants for more affordable prices, that's really something that's gonna be a matter of perspective, right? When I saw that they both were selling them and Hertz, they were on sale. For, the stuff from Hertz is pretty much always on sale. If you want something from Hertz that's not on sale, generally just like give it a couple weeks, it'll probably go on sale. So $4.99 was the sale price, shipping was like seven bucks. And then Wellspring, I believe it was $11.99 
and I don't remember what shipping was. I'm having trouble getting it to pull up in my Etsy app. I always think it's fun to be able to do a compare and contrast, right? I did that over the summer with, what was it, Hertz and Walmart. It was actually Hertz and Hertz, but it was through the different vendors or different sellers of their plants and they had different prices depending on where you were ordering them from. And things were pretty much the same if you wanna go back and watch that video and see. I like Hertz. They've grown on me an awful lot over the last couple of years. They've been doing very nice with their plants and their packaging. These showed up packed tight in their box with the air pack plastic around them. Hadn't moved at all. They had masking tape around the base of them, which maybe was in the video or I can't remember. And uh, prior to that, they were wrapped in paper, came off very easily. And here are those plants, $4.99. About what I would expect. I think these are three inch containers right here. And then there's Wellspring right here. Four plants in a much smaller box than these were in, but they're also smaller pots. These are two and a half inch containers. I ordered four different types of color cases because I was like, I don't, I only need so many of these lime zingers, right? I don't even think I need five of them. Oh, so here's the $11.99 lime zinger from Wellspring. Wellspring is fairly renowned for having teeny, tiny little plants. One thing I would give them though is on their website, they give a pretty clear picture of what you're going to get. It's not the exact plant, but they have a picture of what the plants look like in their package in the mailbox, like give you a representation of how small these are, which is smart of them. Is there anything of use on here that we need to know about? Not really. Wait a few days before putting them into full sunlight, dry or wilted plant, it needs water. All right, just a bunch of tips on there. Thanks for successful growing. That's good to know. $4.99 versus $11.99. I would, would not order this again, that's for sure. Call of Casey is they tend to be pretty quick growers. So within just a matter of weeks, this one will be the same size as these right here. But I mean, even still, why would you pay more for less? I don't really see a reason for that. There's only two growths on here. I'll go ahead and get all of these. There are three other types of colocasias in this package. You can see how they're packaged right now. See, it's all the same. I'm gonna get them unwrapped and have a closer look at them. Maybe see what the roots are looking like in there. And I don't know, but I'll have to get them unwrapped before I can figure all that out. 849 was the shipping. The shipping was more for these four than it was for those four and the package was smaller. I'm gonna call it about even as far as the quality of the packaging goes. They were wrapped up nicely. The skewers that are in here, nice touch to keep them from moving around. I shouldn't say nice touch. I consider making sure plants don't move around their packaging to be like doing the bare minimum. That's something I have ranted on before when I've gotten plants that were very poorly packaged. Uh, here are the other three really pathetic puny little things i will start here with this lovely little gem this is a colocasia waikiki right yes waikiki so i got this one because i had the white lava which was planted in the center of this garden bed over here the turbo's cousin louie was over here on a play date he ripped it right out of the ground he ran past it just took it with him well he doesn't have a garden and he's just barely a year old so i just i just I let it go. I ordered this as a replacement because it has a similar variegation. These get a white in the middle, as you can kind of see here, with some pink veining. Both the Waikiki and the White Lava, I'm pretty sure those are both varieties that take some time and some maturity to really show off the intensity of their variegation. So I'm surprised that this has anything going on with that leaf at all at this size. It's just, there's only one leaf though. And this is the most expensive one I got from Hertz. This little plant was $23.99. That, $23.99. Okay, well, not thrilled about that, but I wanted to make sure that there were four in each package so I could like have a fair comparison between the two. And these were the other three plants that stood out to me. So it's just, it's fine. Give it time. Hopefully it'll grow. When there's only one leaf on a colocasia or an alocasia, you don't have any room for air. So not thrilled about that, but it does feel like it has an okay root mass in here. I'm not going to try and lift it out. In fact, I will probably wait maybe until this opens up another leaf or two before I plant it. I'm on the fence with that. Elephant ears and banana trees, they are all plants where if you disturb the roots very much, they will throw an absolute fit when you replant them. Sometimes you can not disturb the roots at all and they will still throw a fit when they get transplanted. So uh, I would prefer for this to have a little bit more room for air by having some more leaves on it. But I also don't really want to maintain a plant in a two and a half inch pot 
in 90 degree heat during the summer. I will have to constantly water this now. We'll see what happens here. It's not something I'm super attached to. Not thrilled about the price, which it was cheaper, but there it is. Hopefully one day it'll grow up to be a beautiful plant. It'll just shrivel up and die because there's nothing to it. Next up on our list of disappointments here, this is a Colocasia, uh, what is it, Alepio? Yeah, we'll go with that. It's just a variegated Colocasia. Not one that has really intense variegation normally. It's more mottled and muted, as you can see here. Again, the variegation is going to take time to show. The plants have to get a lot larger. They don't have a nice gloss to their foliage, and that's usually where a plant loses me with variegation. With the, what is it? Mojito. Colocasia mojito. I just, it's a neat looking plant, but there's something about the leaf being dull, not having a gloss to it, and all of the different patterns in them that it, to me it just comes across as dirty, and sometimes I feel like, like there's spider mites on them. That's just a me thing. Has nothing to do with whether or not it's a nice plant or not. I wanted to give it a shot because I had been seeing these around for a little while and I thought it would be a fun one to grow and see what happens with it. It has three growths on it. This one doesn't want to stand up with all the plants to be falling over. I don't want it to be that one. This does feel like a more sturdy plant compared to the Waikiki. You can see there's a nice firm growth there in the middle, which I, again, like with the white geeky, I'll wait for that to open up before I plant it. It's an interesting colocasia. It's not a mind-blowing one. How much was that one? This was $24.99. What? I mean, I'm the sucker here. And that's generally, by the way, that that's a big piece of feedback that I hear from people when they talk about Wellspring. I haven't ordered from Wellspring in a long time. I'm talking probably over 10 years. That at least I can't, I've ordered from a lot of places over the years, and so maybe I have in that meantime. They used to be a, a really popular place for getting small perennials for your garden. So it was a nifty place to order if you had a big garden to fill and you were going to be really patient to get tiny little shrubs in the ground. And now they're just flourishing. You get on their website and look at all the different types of bananas and elephant ears that they have. They have tons of them, but they're tiny and pricey for the size. And again though, the price, that's going to be a matter of timing it's almost irrelevant to mention it because I don't know when this video is being watched. Lots of things can change in a matter of months in the plant world and just, you know, I mean, inflation, the way things are going with the economy right now. Availability, popularity, you get it. Like I said, I wanted to get three other plants to put in the box and this is one of the other only ones that stood out to me. So it, there it is. It's all right though, because I do have the last plant here, which I am very excited about. And surprisingly, this is more reasonably priced. Growth is wonky up that'll straight oh it's this is an alocasia nebula imperialis it's not showing it now at its younger age when this gets more mature the fun characteristics will start to show with this one the nebula has this really stiff leaf with where the sinus looks like it's been filled in like it's been colored in almost there's not much of a sinus in it at all but that does get bigger in time as the plant grows and the leaf is a really dark color it's a cool alocasia and that was 1999 that i will say worth it. I'd be willing to pay that considering it's a nice established plant like the pot's firm. You can tell there's a good root system in there. I see roots coming out the top. I wish it were standing up straight but that's not a big deal. That's an easy thing to fix. Get that positioned properly. The auxins and hormones will get that corrected on its own. Not a big deal and this that's going to be a fun plant to have around. Isn't it cool? I mean right now it just looks like one of the fancy alocasias. That is, well, that's all it is. It's just a fancy alocasia. Give it some more time. That'll be a really neat looking plant. I'm really looking forward to how this one grows. The others, I'm like, okay, they're cool. We'll see what happens with them. This one though, like, I would order that again. That's a good enough looking plant. Good enough. There's a low bar. Looking at the others, you can probably see why. I'm not going to rip on them. Too, well, I'm not going to rip on them any more than I already have. Just giving my opinions. Share yours down below. I really prefer to just give the picture of what I got, what I experienced. You can see it for yourself and then people draw their own conclusions and make their own decisions. For me, I would say the $4.99 from Hertz. That's clearly a winner here, right? Much larger, nicer looking plant for $5. You can only compare that to the other Limezinger, to this one. That's the only fair comparison here. It's just it's this puny little thing. Pretty big difference though. Okay, so there it is. The video's not totally lost. Would have been nice to get that queen palm repotted, but you know, that's just, that's the way life goes. Didn't know that we were gonna have storms and torrential downpours. It's all good. The Adenidia has been repotted and really the Adenidia was the plant that needed the repot way more than any of the other palm trees out here. You saw the root ball on that thing. 
it needed some fresh soil around those roots. The queen palm, it's more just like, I would like to repot it. And I have the pot, so I may as well, but it's not a great camera shot. It's not in dire need of it. It's been growing just fine, but it, 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 yeah. let's get it done. Next week, it's supposed to be drier and much cooler. I'm really looking forward to next week. It's supposed to be nice and mild outside. Got some gingers ready to pop open. I'm not gonna do a garden tour. It'd be an easy thing to fall into because there's a lot of stuff going on out here. But need to get this edited and do some cleaning up over here in the pool. Got a lot of cleanup to do with the filter and all the plumbing and stuff from the mud and muck. But thanks for hanging out for fun, however long this was of just nonsensicalness. Hopefully not that nonsensical. I try to make sure to talk a decent amount about what I've been doing. But yeah, like I said, comment down below your experiences with Hertz or Wellspring. And just say hi, I love talking to everybody. Hope you all are doing well, having a great day and a great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.